Um, does a Massachusetts politician have to be full board on one side or the other to satisfy the electorate? And perhaps uh, people are okay with the fact that he is agitating both sides. Can I put what you said another way? He's, he stands nowhere. And that's the problem. And I think people deserve public leaders who are standing firmly for something. And to have a choice about that. Governor Baker, as I was saying before, one of the biggest problems and why people are upset with him on both sides is because he doesn't take a side. He doesn't take stands based on his core values. These are political calculations for him where he does everything he can to walk the tightrope up high where he hopes nobody notices him and tries to balance in the wind without falling down. I am standing firmly on the ground and yelling as loud as I can for the values that I stand for. And the people of this state are going to have a clear choice. They're going to have someone who's willing, based on those political wins, to say, you know what, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to stand with the Republican Party on this, even if it means undercutting a lot of values that Charlie Baker says that he supports. But isn't That's that totally inconsistent, and he can't have it both ways. And I'm not asking to have it multiple ways. I'm telling people where I stand. They're based on my core values. And uh, I'm going to be a very different type of leader that way. These, these issues, women's rights, LGBTQ rights, uh, common sense gun laws. These are based on my values, and I will not make decisions on them based on political calculations like Charlie Baker's. Uh, isn't that at the heart of being bipartisan, though? I mean, he would argue he does take stands. Some are more left-leaning, some are more right-leaning. He probably errs on the right side, but isn't that part of the bipartisanship that he is promoting? There, there are issues to be bipartisan on and to work with uh, legislators and other stakeholders on and to, to find compromise. That's the way government works. But on a woman's right to choose, on whether we need common sense gun laws, on whether transgender people should be able to be themselves under the law and be treated equally under the law, I will not compromise on those issues. To me, those aren't for political negotiation. And what Charlie Baker is saying by his waffling on this and ultimately siding with the Republican Party and a candidate who would undo every single one of those things is that it is more important to him to be loyal to the Republican Party than it is to stand up for those core values. And that's a big difference between us, and that's the choice people are going to have in this election. Jay, you mentioned core values. <coughs> uh, you mentioned core, Charlie Baker's core values. What do you believe those core values are? I have no idea. I don't even know if he knows. Honestly, I mean, watching his performance in the debate last night and trying to ask, answer a question about whether he's going to vote for Jeff Deal and to say he hasn't decided yet, I mean, this isn't like it's a close call in terms of the difference between Jeff Deal and Elizabeth Warren. They're very different candidates who will promote very different agendas in the United States Senate. And he said he was, he was endorsing Jeff Deal long before this debate. Um, to me, what that showed, as I, as I mentioned before, is that he's trying to make political calculations in his head. He's not answering the question from here. And to not be consistent on these issues, to not be able to just tell people, this is what I think on a core issue like this, on a clear choice between two very different candidates about who I'm going to vote for and why, and why I'm asking you to vote for him. To me, that, that shows that his decisions, his leadership, is not tethered to core values. It's tethered to political calculations. And this is not a time in this national context, and with all the challenges that working families are facing in this state, uh, in my view, for that type of leadership. Jay, you, you talk about a woman's right to choose, and you chose to have this event here at NARAL. But just a few weeks ago, Planned Parenthood announced that they were staying neutral in this race. And I think they actually said that no matter who wins, you or the governor, uh, access to women's reproductive health will be protected in Massachusetts. Are they wrong? Well, um, Charlie Baker's been actively campaigning for state legislative candidates who would undercut a woman's right to choose. So, you know, it only takes to amend the state constitution, which is the tether to which we have a constitutional constitutionally protected right to women's right to choose here in Massachusetts, 
It only takes 50 out of 200 votes in the state legislature. Charlie Baker gets enough of his Republican uh, uh, colleagues elected to the state legislature who don't support a woman's right to choose. It's at risk here, too. And by the way, we should care about whether it's at risk around the rest of the country. So there are real differences between myself and Charlie Baker, and I think NARAL saw those differences. I'm proud to have their support um, because I'm consistent on this issue. I'm not supporting candidates to the, to the United States Congress or candidates to our state legislature who would do everything in their power to undercut those rights. I've also been consistent in a lot of other ways uh, to, f to fight to um, protect and further women's um, right to make their own decisions on reproductive health decisions. Things like uh, supporting um, sex ed in, in our schools, uh, which Governor Baker did not support that legislative agenda, Planned Parenthood and NARAL pro-choice. There are a number of other issues uh, where we differ and where I think we can be stronger and need to be stronger. There are a number of um, Democrats in the legislature with the mixed or negative ratings on abortion rights. Uh, do they have a place in your party? So um, the people decide who, who are going to uh, represent them. I will not actively campaign for Democrats who would work to undercut uh, a woman's right to choose. It is, I think, a fundamental value of the Democratic Party. It is a value that I feel strongly about. And while people uh, ultimately are going to choose who represents them, um, I'm not going to actively campaign to support someone and to try to get someone elected who would undercut that right. Do they have a place in your party, though? It's not for me to decide whether they have a place in our party. I don't decide um, <laughs> who, who has a place in the Democratic Party. Um, but uh, I'm not going to actively work to elect candidates who would undercut a woman's right to choose. Jay, you're sort of describing, or all of you, a, a, a rudderless, wishy-washy, weak, stumbling leader. But that's not really what I get from most people. Like it, the, you know, voters, when I talk to them about Charlie Baker, they don't. That's not a way. They might not have issues with him on particular issues for sure. But that's not really the way they describe or see him. Are they getting it wrong? Do they have Charlie Baker all wrong? So usually, what I get when I ask people who say they like Charlie Baker, think he's doing a good job, and if you ask them why, the answer is never, he's really doing a great job fixing our transportation system or making progress on some other issue that affects people's lives. It's usually something like, seems nice, I'm really glad he isn't one of those crazy right-wing extremists. But once we get them to think about this race for more than five seconds and people are just starting to tune in. And, and the choice in this election between someone who's made no progress on any of these issues that are affecting people's lives and as we were just talking about in some ways are taking step he's taken steps to undercut core values of ours uh, people are deciding they that we deserve more from our governor that we deserve a governor that's actually pushing an ambitious agenda to make a difference for people in a way they're going to feel who isn't uh, equivocal about things like a woman's right to choose or the need for common sense gun laws or doing anything to undercut those uh, values. So, you know, a lot of people are just starting to tune into this race and as they understand the choice, we are getting a lot of support. I'm very um, proud of and, and uh, excited about the uh, enthusiasm and, moment and momentum that our campaign has. We are doing it the old fashioned way. Uh, lots of knocking on doors, lots of phone calls. Um, Lots of engaging with people in one-on-one -on -one conversations, and as they're understanding the choice of this election, I'm confident at the end of the day we're going to win this race. Thank you.